Hey folks, we're back. This is Excel 10 Minute Leaders, 10 minutes, insights, inspiration, stories, what have you, into the world of today's leaders. And leaders, not necessarily by virtue of their job titles, but by the fact that they're doing interesting things. They're changing technology, business, and society. All different walks of life from different parts of the world. Today, we're heading to Australia. My next guest. Dion Payne, Dr. Dion Payne, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you here. Not originally from Australia, we're having a bit of a natter off air there. Originally from where in the world? You'll never guess unless you hear her speak long enough and you've got a very good ear. <laughs> where about Dion? I'm from Birmingham. <laughs> and uh, anybody that's listening from Birmingham, if I say, all right, they'll know. <laughs> That is the call sign to the Brummies out there. Birmingham, England, of course, right? So Birmingham, we'll all get England. Out. Hello to all Dion's family and friends who may be watching this post in the archive. Dion, uh, 10 minutes on XL 10 Minute Leaders. Are you ready to start? I'm as ready as I'm going to be. All right, the 10 minutes starts now. Let's kick off with a basic introduction. What does it say on your business card? I actually don't have business cards. <laughs> Right, well you have to <laughs> which is really why. interesting which is really interesting because today i was at a networking event and i was supposed to rock up with 30 business cards and i just didn't get that part of the memo uh, but essentially what i do is i partner investors that are looking for double digit returns with projects that provide affordable and sustainable homes and mm. i'm the ceo and co-founder of a company called high impact property investments fantastic retail property we're talking about here yeah, retail or commercial? Oh, you do both. Okay. I'm actually about to start um, on a project, a commercial project, um, which is pretty exciting, actually. Talk a little bit more okay. about that later, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are interested in real estate and property investing. And a lot of people think they know. I'm sure, you know, around dinner tables, people will tell you about real estate investing. But you've been in it for long enough to know. So I'm going to ask you the next question. What do most people get wrong about your craft, your craft being property investing? Oh, look, this is a really interesting question. So I think, look, a couple of things. There's large sums of money that can be made in property and um, that sort of mix of large sums of money can be quite intoxicating. Mm. Uh, so people, I feel, forget that there's humans behind um, behind the property market. It's not just about property. It's, there's, there's human connections in there as well. So... For example, where I live in Byron Bay, there's, um, you know, it's a beautiful place to live. Many people came here because of just the stunning beauty. Um, but there's a real, um, particularly since um, COVID as well, mm. um, because we all know that we can work from anywhere. Um, a lot of people have looked at Byron and thought, well, yeah, that's the place that I want to be. You know, it's, it's relatively um, mild weather, uh, good rainfall um, and, and gorgeous scenery. So... There's a lot of people that have moved interstate into Byron. Uh, but what's that, what that has created, and it's that whole supply and demand um, paradigm where there's not a lot of houses for the amount of people that want to be living here. So as prices have gone up, more wealthy people have come in. Um, but now there's, there's the, the gap between the, house, the have secure houses and those that don't mm. have secure houses has widened. Um, so what we're seeing is a lot of women, um, and it's particularly affecting women, actually. It's affecting a lot of people, but um, mostly women, uh, single women, uh, women over 55, having to sleep in their cars, uh, couch surf, camp in unsafe situations. Mm. Um, and it's not, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, why don't they just move somewhere else where it's cheaper? Um, but often they can't because this is where their community is and then they have to start all over again or there might be custody issues with with um, ex-partners and things like that. So I think, yeah, I think somewhere along the line, we've forgotten that there's humans behind mm. property um, mm. and there's a great rush and a trample and we're leaving a lot of people behind. Yeah. And those people you talk about, technically, they are homeless, even though we don't think of that as a homeless person. We think of homeless people as what we call in the old days, tramps, people who roam the street. Yeah. But home, I suppose a lot more people are homeless in those sense. They live in very temporary situation. They're living in cars and, like you say, couch surfing. So, I mean, that is yeah. a problem a lot for people. And they don't realise actually how vulnerable people can be in that situation as well. 
Yeah, so you... well, I mean, it's simple things like, um, you know, where, where do you wash? Like if you sleep in your car, where do you actually go and wash and then go to work? Uh, because mm. this, isn't, this isn't the down and outs. This is professional people who uh, just are on a single income and can't make it work with the rents in this mm. area. And how has it changed in the last 18 months? Next question. Moving up the notch a little bit is, has it, has the COVID, I mean, you've mentioned, for example, people coming in to the area because they're obviously looking for more of a lifestyle choice in the property they're mm. buying. Have there been sort of more macro trends in what's happening in property? Um, I'm going to throw in a dumb question is, what about Bitcoin? I'm sure you're getting that at the moment. Like, oh, you know, you, you, want, to, you want to be in Bitcoin, Dion, not property. <laughs> so come on, put me right here. Oh, look, I, oh, I, I'm not the expert on, on Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. And in fact, to be honest with you, I've come to the party a bit late. Um, you know, I've been hearing about it for a long time. And, you know, I've just thought, well, you know, it's numbers and digits on a computer. Like, how can this work? I don't get it. Um, <laughs> but it has piqued my interest in um, the last little while because, and this is really cool, actually, there's a company in the US that I'm working with, and, and they are fantastic. They're um, Cocoon, te Cocoon Technologies. And um, they have a model where they're essentially renovating homes, making them energy efficient. Uh, winterizing is one of the words they use, which is basically insulating the homes. Mm. Uh, automation, so putting in smart technology, and also, um, uh, putting solar and batteries in there. So you've got this comfortable home. Um, and they've also got a very innovative financial model uh, where if you're paying rent, basically, you can just be paying off your own mortgage and, and they will finance mm. that. Um, so I love these guys and I love what they're doing. Um, and because I'm now hearing credible people like them talking about cryptocurrency, I'm actually like, okay, this, there's definitely something in this. And, and one of the guys, um, the CFO, was talking about actually mining um, Ethereum coins. Um, mm. And he was telling me how he was doing it. I was like, wow, that's so fascinating. <laughs> so from, from, you know, Luddite to crypto, mm. I'm not, I wouldn't put myself in the crypto nerd category, but certainly more crypto curious than I have been. Absolutely. It's the way to be interesting. You yeah. know, curious about everything. What about yeah. your 20 year old self, Dion, watching this now, what would you tell her? What would you advise her? Knowing what you know now as a wiser Dion, yeah. what would you advise 20-year-old Dion? Well, I'd advise 20-year-old Dion to, you know, enjoy getting drunk, partying, <laughs> you know, all of that. <laughs> that she was wasn't fun. back then? I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dissuade her against any of that. <laughs> um, but what I would say is, and I, I was in the car listening to an audio book called 15, 15 Lessons for Conscious Leaders. Mm. Um, and the last chapter was talking about how if you want to change something, you actually have to be, but there's a formula and I love formulas. I've got a science background, I love formulas. Um, but there's, there's a level of discomfort that you have to feel. You, there's a level of resistance that you have to get over. You've got to have a vision that's big enough uh, to mm. be able to make that change. And um, you know, put all those things together, it's basically have that big vision get over your resistance and, um, and, and then change will happen. And also sort of having first steps in there as well. And I love that. So I think I'd be talking to 20 year old Dion and just saying, look, if you want to manifest um, mm. much quicker, go for the vision because that changes everything. Mm. What was 20 year old Dion like? Was she uh, into property back then? Was no, she, I mean, no. she must've been smart at school and university if she got a doctorate. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, 20-year-old Dion um, actually made the connection at that point because up until that point, Dion was partying and, you know, and having okay. a really good time. And then um, the third year of university, uh, Dion, I like talking about myself in the third person, yeah. and Dion, <laughs> <laughs> Dion was um, uh, doing a, a work placement. Mm. So all of the studies that she'd done up to that point, it was kind of like, Oh, I'm doing this, but I don't understand why. Got mm. into the workplace, actually got to apply it, and then realised, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing it for. So um, that was 20-year-old Dion. So it's still, you know, sort of enjoying life, having a few vendors, but actually applying what she'd learnt mm. and um, realising that actually theoretical stuff is good, but also hands-on stuff works well as well. Mm. 
Yeah, a good yeah. balance. Who, who turned you on to property? Was it, did you read something? Did you, because often, you know, nobody goes to university to study property, do they? And you don't often get a job to learn it either. And often it's a person or a book, isn't it, that opened your door to it. What was it for you? Yeah, for me, it was um, just the situation that we were in, actually. I'd, I'd finished my PhD. I decided to have children because I didn't mm. want to be on the... So it, there's a there's a phenomena that happens in science, and I, I don't think it's just science. But um, you finish your PhD, you get a couple of postdoctoral positions, and then you start thinking about a family. Well, mm. by the time I'd finished my PhD, I was 30 years old, um, and I knew I wanted a family, and I knew that I could go all in into the postdoc career thing, but then I, I probably wouldn't have a family. So. Um, I didn't, want that. I didn't want that to happen. It's very important to have children. And um, mm. so, yeah, we, we, um, I'd finished my PhD. I was home with my kids. We were on one income, myself and my husband. And I wanted to get into property, but um, on one income, it was really hard. So even, even back then, <laughs> housing wasn't affordable mm. on one income. Um, and, um, I, you know, we just, I missed out on a property that I really wanted to purchase. Uh, we just didn't quite have enough. And I remember stomping on the deck and shouting this isn't fair and um, but that again that dissatisfaction actually mm. sort of just helps us to look closer at what was out there and it was an education seminar that my husband went to a couple of hours and mm. you know, he came back he said oh, i really think we should learn about property and i thought yeah let's give it a crack so yeah so do you do it together husband and wife we did we did mm. and, oh, did. Okay. and then we That's had an experience where um <laughs> it, it we it was the most it was actually the experience that turned me on to affordable mm. and sustainable homes. But mm. it was such an intense experience <laughs> that mm. my husband said, I'm not cut out for this entrepreneurial life. I'll, I'll mm. do the sensible, you know, sort of working thing. Um, you can go and do the entrepreneurial thing and live on the seat of your pants if you want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's part of you. Were you always entrepreneurial? I'm almost curious where that comes from because it sounds like, you know, you were pursuing a very... Um, mapped out career path in in studies as well and often that isn't an entrepreneurial career path at what point in your yeah. life was that instilled in you was it somebody around you when you were younger or did you learn it later in life no no i i it's something that i've learned now oh I, actually mm. i wouldn't say learnt i'd say learning uh, it's very much a learning process um and what i what i've always been good at is project-based stuff Mm. So anything with a start, a beginning and an end, um, very good at that. And science was all about that. So that was fine. Um, property projects were all about that. So mm. that was fine. Um, and now, because I am establishing a business, um, which is I'm, I'm looking at, um, you know, having something that is a legacy, not just in the properties that we're developing, but, um, but ongoing, you know, so mm. for my family, for the world. Um, it's very much a, a business growth for mm. me, um, and, and I, I say it's it's about growing my business, but it's also about growing me into mm. being that leader. Yeah, very honest as well. I like it. I like the style, and I think people will find that refreshing as well, especially in that sector, and quite welcoming. And I'm sure it resonates with them as well. So, how do people find out more about you, Dion? Where do they go to get in contact? Yeah, sure. Well, if they go to my website, highimpactpropertyinvestments.com.au, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of options. One, they can either book a strategy call, uh, so we'll get on the phone, and um, I'm actually a property coach as well, so I can help people if they're stuck, whether that's in they're a first home buyer or uh, they're looking to get into property investment or property development, so I can help with that. Um, but also, if people are looking to invest into particular projects, I, I work with them to do that as well. So... Um, either book a strategy call or download an information brochure on the website and both of those are very visible as to where to go. Excellent. One more time for the URL. Let's do it. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, www.highimpactpropertyinvestments.com.au You heard it here first. Go and book a call or reach out to Dion. Hey, everybody. That was Dion, Dr. Dion Payne, all the way from Byron Bay in Australia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Graham. It's been wonderful to be here. Thank you.